Welcome to episode three of I Wouldn't Start a Podcast. I'm Adam. I'm Sam. And we got we got a whole lot of bullshit for you guys today. Uh, I think the first thing we're going to talk about, and uh, I mean all of our listeners currently, they're people we know personally, so obviously they know what state we're in. Uh, we kind of wanted to, to keep away from letting the internet at large know where we live. But uh, I think narrowing it down to a state is probably not that dangerous. And, uh, I mean, Michigan has castle doctrine, so someone shows up in my house. They're going to have a problem, not necessarily me. But uh, something our brilliant state government has decided um, on behalf of the schools or a bunch of school boards, some some politician somewhere who, who doesn't actually do anything for a living has decided the schools are not going to be doing uh, Halloween or Valentine's Day because, uh, you know, in the interest of being more inclusive, because you know how, how exclusive Halloween and Valentine's Day are. Uh, I remember when I was when I was back in school, we had the uh, the the czar, the holiday czar come in. And if he saw if he saw anyone not in the preferred group celebrating the holiday, he had this uh, hickory cane. We called him old Hickory, like Andrew Jackson. And, oh, he would take those kids out back and just, just whoop on them. He'd just beat the hell out of these kids for up to half an hour at a time, depending on how tough the kid was, you know, to break their spirit and let them know, hey, Halloween and Valentine's Day, those aren't for you, you little shit. Like, those are for the other kids. So I'm... Obviously, that's a 100% real story that definitely happened. Uh which makes me confused about what exactly these schools have are talking about. Like we, we don't, we want to be inclusive. So we're getting rid of holidays that are open to everyone. Like I could see them making an absurd argument that like, Oh, we're not going to celebrate Christmas because that's not inclusive to children whose families don't celebrate Christmas. Like that's, that would be exclude, you know, it would, it would exclude the Jewish kids because obviously what most people do if they see a Jewish person celebrating uh, uh, Christmas is they attack them violently. Oh, no, 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 no. You have to celebrate Hanukkah. You can't, you can't celebrate our holiday. This is, this is ours. This is our uh, consumer hell holiday about Jesus. But they're doing it, they said, because of, like, probably poor kids that don't have the money for costumes and, like, Valentine's gifts or cards to pass out to their class, yeah, even... which is also kind of stupid because most teachers that teach younger kids like that usually will spend their own money to, like, buy Valentine's Day things for the class or come up with activities or, you know, like, make little hats for them and stuff so they or buy costumes well, yeah, on clearance for them weren't they weren't they normally just making hats that like a dun, a big dunce cap that says my family's poor isn't that isn't that what the state's trying to protect these children from is these psychopath teachers that are like no this holiday not for you your family's poor your your dad day drinks you can't you can't do halloween i don't know who can't afford to buy their children Valentine's Day cards. Yeah, I mean, how how much They're are like, ten bucks maybe, for a pack of fifty? Yeah, maybe like ten bucks. I mean, go without your Starbucks coffee for the day, or you know, I mean, your pack even, of smokes, or whatever your vice is. I guess like don't do your nails maybe for the week. Like, uh, well, I, I I'm sure some people are going to listen to that and be like, you're poor shaming these 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 people aren't spending money on luxuries like that. Skip a meal. Skip a meal. Ba back in the day, there were dudes who would, you know, work a 14-hour shift in a goddamn coal mine getting black lung so that their family had a house to live in and food to eat. And uh, we've gotten to a point now where we're canceling a holiday because some hypothetical family somewhere can't afford $10 for a pack of Valentine's Day cards. Like, I, I really, I don't think... I don't think this is something parents pushed for. I think this is just some uh, some people on a committee somewhere who think they're representing the poor. Yeah, there. Yeah, because there's no way. There is absolutely no way. Even if there are some parents that couldn't afford it, if they ask the class or ex parents to bring in stuff for the class for them all to be included, 
So maybe if kids didn't have it, like people would do that because they do it all the time. Well, I don't know. That sounds when like my, a lot of commie gobbledygook. When my child was in elementary school, I would all the time, they would ask you to donate like extra paper or pencils or folders like during the beginning of the year, school year for children who might not be able to afford school supplies. You know, around, like, holidays when they would do, uh, you know, parties for the kids. They would ask all the kids to bring in, like, and they would tell you how many things, you know, like, how much to bring in so that every kid could have something. And no one minded because they're kids. They're, they're kids. They deserve to take part in the day or the celebration and stuff. And taking that away from them just means that they can't do it at their house if they really didn't have the money to celebrate. So now you're taking away the celebration from the kid completely because they don't get to celebrate it at all because maybe they don't celebrate that at their house. Yeah, I mean, I would imagine for a lot of these a lot of these kids that they're these people are claiming that they're doing this to protect like more than likely uh whatever kind of celebration was going on at school was probably the highlight of their day. Uh, cause they're, they're just going to go home to whatever dirt hovel they live in. I guess like just trying to imagine what kind of living situation people who don't have a spare $10 are in. I assume their floors are made of dirt. Their, uh, their furnace requires them to shovel coal in constantly. Uh, basically like, uh, they're living in Vic, like Victorian era England, like little Oliver Twist running around wearing, wearing his older brother's hand-me-downs that are three sizes too big. Cause, uh. I mean, the way I see people spend money, I, I really don't think we have uh, such a poverty problem in this country that these families can't afford a pack of Valentine's Day cards or, you know, and uh, like, okay, we'll, we'll go with Halloween. Oh, they can't afford to buy a costume. You don't have to buy a co- You can make things. Like, I don't, this might be something most people in this country have forgotten, but you can, you can actually make things. Like you could, you could take stuff you already have that you're not using and make something from it. But the the issue there is that requires like effort. Like you have to, you have to do something that's not, uh, you know, sitting around talking on your cell phone using the speaker phone. Cause that, that seems to be a poor people thing is, uh, if you're talking on your cell phone, you have to have it on speaker phone. So everyone around you can be subjected to your conversation. Like you can't hold the phone up to your ear. You can't buy yourself a $10 pair of earbuds with a microphone on it. Like, I mean, okay, maybe, maybe this, the, the earpiece on their phone is broken. So they have to use the speaker phone to, to use the, the other speakers on their phone to hear the phone call. You can get a pair of earbuds with a microphone on them for like six ninety nine at most like department stores. Like, I know Meyer has them. A few times a year, they got a gigantic bin full of them. And usually when they fill the bin, they're on sale and they're like $3.99. And I'll buy like five of them because I tend to destroy earbuds at the gym because uh, my my sweat is apparently very acidic and destructive. So just I anything I touch, I destroy. Yeah, or you can just go to like Five Below. Because Five Below... The ice cream store? Has... Uh... Pretty much almost any, everything and anything there sometimes. like. Yeah, but can you buy a Bentley there? No, you cannot buy a car there. Obviously, we need to ban the company of Bentley from the entire state because they're, they're excluding poor children. We got we to gotta get rid of them. Uh, you know, those, those kids might look out the window one day and see a Bentley and feel bad. Unlike back in the day where, like, as a kid, you'd look out the window, see a really nice car and be like, oh, I'm going to work hard when I'm older so I can afford that. That's a nice car. I'd like to have that one day. So they aspire to something. You don't, you don't, you don't want kids aspiring to things because uh, I I think this is the mindset of a lot of people that, that are running things. You don't want your population to aspire for things because then they might take your job and then you won't get to collect your six figure, you know, seven figure salary for, uh, sitting in your office, having zoom calls all day, really, really important zoom calls. Very important. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't know if anyone knows this, but literally nothing important has ever been done over Zoom. Like anything that's ever happened over Zoom is just a net negative. I think maybe people can give me some examples of like positive things done over Zoom. But uh, oh no, there's a positive like Jeffrey Tubin from CNN. He got he got caught doing some stuff over Zoom while looking at his coworkers, and uh, he got suspended from work for like six months. I'm pretty sure if I were to do what he did at work, uh, they'd probably put me in jail. They'd, they'd probably put me in jail and I'd probably end up on some kind of registry that I had to tell my neighbors about. But uh, Jeffrey Tubin, he did this over Zoom. And um, then a bunch of journalists came out and they were like, it's perfectly normal. Everyone does this. And it's like, this must be very lenient workplaces where, where you can get away with things like that. Um, cause I gotta tell you most working class jobs, if you were to do something like that, uh, you're, you're definitely going to talk to some police. You're definitely going to be put on a list. And depending on what kind of working class job it is, like if you work construction, your coworkers are probably going to beat the shit out of you. Like they're, they're going to be like, uh, why were you doing that in your truck outside of this customer's house? Like you are, you are a sick pervert and, uh, we're, we're going to hit you. We're going to hit you a lot right now. And you no longer have a job because none of us feel comfortable around you anymore. You clearly have some impulse control issues. You couldn't wait till you got home. You're sitting in the backseat of my truck, um, pleasuring yourself. And uh, so you're also walking home today because uh, I'm not letting you back in my truck after you did that. Jeffrey Tubin, however, he gets to come out and be like, well, I thought I turned, I thought I turned my camera off. Like... What, Jeffrey? Okay, what? so we have to get Adam off of this rant of Jeffrey too. I've had a right lot now. of caffeine today. I I don't like these people. I mean, I'm not. So I'm it, definitely not pro communism, but uh, some of some of these these little commies ideas about how like oh we gotta we gotta punish the rich. I think they're just going after the wrong group of rich. I think there are plenty of rich people that like. Just lock him in the trunk of a car and forget about it. Just walk away. Don't actually do that. I'm 100. This is a satire. I don't know if I don't know if it's illegal to say that or not. Got to be I, um, careful. I read this article on my phone the other day about a uh, a woman suing Kellogg's for five million dollars because there's not enough strawberries in its pop tart. I didn't know there were any strawberries in Pop Tarts. Well, strawberry flavored Pop Tarts. Yeah, I didn't realize they actually use strawberries for that. I mean, I never really thought they did either, but apparently, um, how did she determine how many strawberries were in a Pop Tart? Because obviously, you you break one of those open, that you're not finding actual. Pe- it's like I guess the slime and jelly. The inside. pastry um, contains two percent or less. Of dried strawberries, dried pears, dried apples, and red forty. Oh, and it I love says red 40. that on the red nutrition label. But she's saying that the consumers are being misled by Pop Tarts because there's not like I think there's something that's not on the nutrition label specific to basically say like artificially flavored. I mean, I, I, I don't remember it a hundred percent and I only screenshotted like an old person, a few of the things. Um, I mean, that's, but I thought it's not was, that old. I take pictures of my computer screen with my phone sometimes when I don't want to open the snipping tool. So, you know, it's, uh, it's more convenient. I mean, my take on the whole thing, like I am 100% in support of suing Kellogg's for $5 million. I like that part. I am very confused by the idea that someone would look at a pop tart and go, "That's made of fresh fruit. That is clearly that clearly has real fruit in it." Like, I mean, yeah. No part of a pop tart tastes anything like real food. Yeah, but it's weird. It's kind of funny to me, but it brings me back to things like how someone sued McDonald's because they spilled hot coffee. No, no, on no, no, their no. Lap. That 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 whole thing. 
what what you're what you're framing that as that's McDonald's spent millions of dollars on a PR campaign. In reality, what that was, th- first of all, they had the coffee way hotter than it should have been. Like way, way, way hot. Like, no, 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 you're, you're making a face right now, but way hotter than a home coffee maker even makes coffee. Like so hot you, you can't actually serve it to someone, especially someone who's going to be in a moving vehicle because it's an enormous burn hazard. Like the, the coffee at a fast food place, it's got to be brewed or however they make it, conjured up by a wizard like ladled out of the sewer, however they do it, but it's got to be brought down to a cool enough temperature that you can drink it when they hand it to you. The coffee they handed this woman was way too hot. The lid wasn't secured on properly. And uh, initially all the lady wanted was she wanted McDonald's to pay for her medical expenses. Cause she, she had extensive third degree burns all over her lap and everything like it horrific, like very, very bad. And McDonald's basically told her, no, no, we're not giving you any money. You get, you get nothing, lady. You figure out how to pay for your extensive surgeries you need. Like she almost died. This is a very old woman. She almost died from the burns. She was, she was literally rushed to a hospital and was in the ER. Like that's how bad it was. And McDonald's was like, no, no, we're not paying for our mistake. So she got a lawyer and McDonald's ended up paying several times more than they would have had to if they just did the right thing from the beginning. And everyone always uses that as an example of, oh, Americans will sue over anything. Like, no, that was that was a legitimate lawsuit. Like that lady had a very legitimate case. But McDonald's has virtually limitless money. So they were able to go on a PR campaign, making it sound like ah, this crazy old woman sued us because our coffee was too hot when that's not really an accurate representation of what happened like they I don't understand how their coffee would make would be hotter than any other coffee place because they make it on a coffee pot just like yes and the temperature else. was turned up way too high the temperature was way 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 higher than it should have been i didn't realize there was a temperature on your coffee pot well yours at home no the one they have at mcdonald's yeah and I, I believe I'm going off of memory for this, but I'm pretty sure the reason it was that hot is because it allowed them to brew more coffee faster. And uh, they not supposed to not supposed to hand someone coffee that's that hot. Like so that like, no, that was that lady had an act like that's why she won. It wasn't just like frivolous. Oh, this coffee was was three degrees too hot. And and I hurt my lip. No, they they handed her a cup of boiling water, basically. Like, they handed her a cup of boiling hot coffee and were like, yeah, go ahead, drink it, I dare you. Like, that coffee would have had to sit for 20 minutes before you could even take a sip. So that's like, uh, yeah, but I mean, no, I support suing Kellogg's for any and all reasons. Oh, that's good, that's good. I'm glad I turned my ringer down before we started this and... Scam likely decided to call me right now. I'm scam likely loves me. They call me multiple times a day. They're really concerned about uh I just my car them. warranty. It's a different number every time. So like yeah, I'd block one, but they'd just spoof a different number next time. So I there there is no there. there is no blocking them because what they're doing they're just and and I've I've noticed how they do it. Like if if I go up north somewhere to work and I'm up there for a few hours. The next few scam likely calls that I get will come from that area code, which more than likely means my uh, my cell phone service provider is uh, selling my location data to some Indian scam farm somewhere. Which, hey, shout out to T-Mobile, thanks, thanks for doing that, guys. I'm glad you're you're pe- like it's qu- it's very quick turnaround because it'll be like later that day or the next day that I'm getting calls from from that area code. So, like, they're working fast. They're like, oh, he was up by Traverse City. So who want, Anyone want that information? Adam was up by Traverse City. And then, yeah, start getting calls from a Traverse City area code. And that's usually how, like, even if it doesn't show up as scam likely, I look at it and I'm like, oh, okay, I know what that is. Like, you know, my phone didn't recognize it as a scam call, but uh, no one from that area code has any reason to be calling me. So, like, I thanks, T-Mobile. That's how they keep my bill nice and low. So they, you know, I'm only paying like seventy dollars a month or whatever. 
Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. I think they could at least give me a discount because they're like, oh, by the way, we're selling all of your information to literally anyone with money. They keep trying to get me to switch from Metro to Metro by T-Mobile. Because I guess Metro and T-Mobile are like the same now. But they're still like separate. Uh Uh-huh. So why don't you switch? Well, T-Mobile is more. Well, yeah, because they need the extra money so they can package up your location data and sell it to India. Because I think I looked on there to, like, switch to get, like, an upgraded, like, phone and, like, stuff like that. Like, it was, it was, like, I pay 80 now for two phones, basically. I pay $80 for two phones, unlimited everything. And well, it, it, think, think about it this way. You could, if It was going to be like T-Mobile, 120 or 130 for two phones. No, tell them you want to pay more. Tell them you want to pay 160 $80 <laughs> for, per phone minimum. <laughs> you want that platinum level service where someone in Hyderabad, India knows exactly where you've been all day that same day. You don't want to have to wait until the next day for the scammers to figure out where you were. You... In reality, you want you want them to have real time information. You want them to have access to your cell phone camera, the microphone. Like I, what I want, I want people in India right now to be listening to this podcast through my phone, so we don't get any like views or downloads or anything from it. Let's cut out the middleman. Prevent prevent us from actually being successful as a podcast by using the cell phone company to to get around it. Oh, yeah, that reminds me, too. You guys, if you're listening, if you want us to talk about something, email us. I wouldn't start a podcast at gmail.com. Oh, yeah, we got, like, we got email and, like, social media and stuff. It's it's all I wouldn't start a podcast. So just, you know, go on, go on whatever, uh, Friendster, search for I wouldn't start a podcast, uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, go for it. Uh... It's the Chinese one, like Baidu or whatever. Uh, we should probably make an account on there. Get some Chinese. Like, they got 1.6 billion people over there. And I think 400 million or so actually speak English. So, untapped market. That's what I want. I want a bunch of Chinese people listening to me who have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. I don't like, think most of the people here do, do either. <laughs> I don't think I know what I'm talking about most of the time. I mean, it is it is what it is. Like, yeah. This this podcast, like I've had to, I've had to listen to myself talk for thirty two years. Like I have to share that with other people because I can't, I can't carry the burden anymore. I gotta, I gotta spread out the burden, make other people suffer through my thoughts. I can't be trapped in here with them by myself. I'm not qualified for that. It's a scary thing. It's scary. Yeah. Oh, imagine like at some point we're gonna get like a hundred listeners on a on one of our episodes. And I'm just going to be sitting there going, oh, there's going to be a knock on my door. Like someone from like the Dr. Fauci is going to come knock on my door and be like, you're inflicting. I can't do it. Oh, I thought I could do an impression of him. I can't. He's going to come and tell me like you're inflicting your ideas on other people. Uh, We have to lock you in a cage forever. So you never do that again. But then you could just take that picture you have of him and kiss it. That's true. I do. Tell him how much you love him. I got some pictures of doctors. It's going to be good once we do this with video. I'm um, thinking with how long my computer upstairs takes to uh, render the YouTube videos of these episodes. Uh, probably going to have to be building a new computer before we do any kind of actual video regularly. Because, uh, I mean, a 25 minute long podcast episode that's like all audio with just a background image took my computer like nearly two hours to encode. So I'm thinking seven year old gaming computer, not the ideal thing for. For uh, video production work. Weird. But then I looked into like, oh, I could build a rendering computer. And, you know, like a smart person, I went on Newegg and I was like, I want to build the best of the best. Okay. I need the best of the best for my podcast that I'm recording in my spare bedroom. Mm -hmm. Um, About 10 grand for best of the best. And uh, I mean, two, two and a half grand of that was just the processor. I mean, granted, I went overboard like... Yeah, 64 core Threadripper, absolutely, definitely need that, definitely need that for this. Uh, 256 gigabytes of RAM, sure, that's reasonable, that's a reasonable number. I want to spend $1,000 on RAM. 
So in reality, probably probably build a decent rendering computer for three or four grand. But um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to build a new gaming computer, but a gaming computer and a rendering computer, two relatively different things. I mean, if I do, if I do build myself a new gaming computer, it, it'll be faster at doing the encoding and all of that than the one I currently have. But it would be nowhere near as fast as like something with a Threadripper. But uh, one of those processors is garbage for gaming. So it's not really like, a, oh, I could build one that'll do it all kind of thing. It's like, uh, no, these are these are specialized, uh, these are specialized jobs. How long have we been talking? Uh, about 26 minutes. Should we end this one here and then immediately start recording the next episode that we'll release in a few days? To yeah. build suspense. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So uh, check us out on, uh, I think we're on, we're on Spotify now. I think I got us on iHeartRadio. We're on Google Podcasts, Pandora. Um, YouTube. The, yeah, we're on YouTube. We're on uh, Buzzsprout, the link I keep spamming at everybody. We have a uh, Twitter. Yeah, we have a Twitter that we don't really use because... I mean, it wouldn't start, and it's because I don't know how to use Twitter. Well, and it's it's wooden without a T, right? Yeah. W O L D N start. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jack Dorsey won't let us have the letter T for some reason. He's hoarding all of the letter T's to himself. It's some kind of Boston Tea Party protest he's doing because he's a crazy homeless man hooked on hallucinogenics. He used to be cool. Jack Dorsey used to be a cool. He used to be very free speech. Now he's he's a lunatic. All right, well, that's all of our social media. What else do we have? Our email, I wouldn't start a podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. Just send us horrific images. Just uh, real. Ba- I want to I wanna throw up when I open the email. That's my goal. Send me things that will hurt, hurt me spiritually. And we'll talk about them on the podcast. Maybe maybe we'll get a priest to come on. And the, the priest can explain what's happening to me. Eventually, we'll read all our hate mail to you guys. Yeah, send us hate mail. Uh Tell us how much you don't like us. Send our podcast to other people who will hate us so they could send us hate mail too. Ideally, I'd like to spend the first two hours after waking up every morning just reading about how much people don't like me. That sounds good. Yeah, that's that's really what this podcast is about is I I want I want like encyclopedias full of hate every morning. All right, well that's the end of the episode. Uh bye everybody. Bye. Oh yeah, thanks for listening. We realize we should probably thank our listeners. For subjecting themselves to this. So thanks, bye. Thanks, bye.